Lana Paria. Lana Paria. My name is Lana Paria. Lana Paria. I'm Lana Paria. Two R's, two L's. Well, absolutely. And the f kind of along with that, the idea that it can be unmade or, you know, right. or reversed in a way or broken down. How did Robin break down your walls? I think. Because well, people really like that relationship. Yeah, they know. do. I don't know if they, they do. do that, but. No, no, they do. There's a lot of outlaw queen fans. Um, you know, I don't think Regina ever thought she would find the love again. I think she was also quite terrified to love anyone again because of, you know, what she can potentially turn into if anything happens. So she was afraid to love again. And I think Robin, um, Robin really saw her heart. I think Robin saw who she was deep down inside. You know, once you unveil the, the mask, the evil mask, and kind of remove that, she really is a good person and she has a giant heart and I think Robin helped her see that and reminded her of that. Um, he's also, you know, what's not to love with I mean, Robin? I mean, he's, it's true. He's so masculine and he's a hero and he protects her and, you know, they work together. So there's a, there's a big attraction there. And, and I think she really loves what a great father he is too. I think that helps as well because Regina tries and she has now she's been a, a great mom so I think that's something they share and and she's attracted to his sort of vigil anti yeah. and strength <laughs> would you say yeah. and and when do you think she first realized that um probably there's a scene between them uh, a picnic scene in Regina's office in front of the fire I think that was the moment. That was the moment. Yeah. She's like, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Okay, so the character can be hard to follow with all the flashbacks and the flash forwards and things like that. How do you keep track of all the levels and dynamics? I have my own timeline, literally oh. at home. Um, I do a lot of homework. I, I'm a good student. I, <laughs> I, I like doing homework. Preparation is really important. Um, and I have a timeline. So I keep track of everything. And, and so therefore it makes it easy. So every so often I have to make that phone call and go, where are we? I'm, wait, it's been a hundred plus episodes, I'm lost. <laughs> so I, th I would think it would be essential to have that because, yeah. you know, I mean, like you said, a hundred plus episodes yeah. done nearly with the fifth season going in next. Is there a, is there a favorite Regina, young Regina, evil queen Regina? I mean, is there one that you really enjoy that I playing? Love. Um, yes, I, I like many, but one of my favorite sides to her was playing the old hag. Not, I know it, it was like so sh short lived, but, um, I've never been able to play an old lady. And this is something you don't know, but when I was studying, and I still study, but when I was in class, um, I used to love playing old people. I used to love playing old ladies, and I remember my mentor saying, Lana, you're never, ever going to get cast as an 85-year-old woman. You're 22. <laughs> Take off the wig and show, be the woman that you are. And I was like, I'm a character actor. I don't want to be a leading lady. So when I had the opportunity to play the old hag, and Adam and Eddie, actually, they, didn't, they were going to hire a real old hag. And I said, You're like, this is my I, chance. I said, what? It's the same role. You can't take that away from me. I'm the evil queen. I'm also the old hag. So um, they gave me the opportunity to play her, and I had a blast. And I took a picture of myself as the old hag, and I sent it to my mentor and said, <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> you were it, wrong. I, I had to wait 10 years, but. Now I'm playing an 85-year-old woman. <laughs> I, I was, you know, yeah, absolutely. Is part of, that's interesting because some actors, you know, it's the more layers they put on, the more free they become. Would you say that rings true in part of your process? Absolutely. Once I put her costume on, once I have that hair and the costume on, I completely transform. My voice changes. My body changes. Um... I just, I become devilish and abuse people on set. <laughs> That's Everyone's delightful. like, oh God, Lana's the evil queen today. Okay, it's just like tiptoe around her. Don't piss her off. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> 
when you, I would imagine when you first found out about the project and got the, you know, sides for the first meeting or audition, it was kind of like, um, okay, I'm going to play the evil queen. How did you even begin to prepare for that? And what was the audition process like? So I originally auditioned for a different show, um, playing a trauma surgeon, which I've done before in my career. And I, um, I, I had this like two page monologue and I was reading for the casting director at the end of the, the monologue. She looked at me and said, I want you to play the evil queen on a show called Once Upon a Time. And I just thought, what did I just do <laughs> that? Like I was like reading it, for a surgeon. How did she see the evil queen? I mean, I was being so genuine. Like well, I, I played a trauma surgeon. Like I had good bedside manner as a doctor. So I was like, where did she? So um, she said, you're a great storyteller. And so I, under, I said, oh, okay, I get that. Um, she said, take, take the script home, read it. And, and I'd love to you know, bring you into producers. I said, okay. So I went home and read it and I just thought, wow, this is an incredible script. I've never read anything like this before. What an interesting and unique concept. Um, so I, I loved the duality. I loved that she was, there were two parts to her. Um, that's like every actor's dream to play multiple characters on a show. Um, so I, I just, one thing that rang in my head was you're a good storyteller. So okay and she said and I love how human you are and I just thought you have to remain human it can't just be like this caricature or like this Disney character that everyone knows like I have to go back to just being a real person and that's really where I started and then in being a real person there's real pain there's real experiences and so even though I didn't know her backstory I created one and, and that fed my performance quite a bit. And then the application of the wardrobe and the, yes. you know, everything like that yeah. probably just kicked it into... Well, I, I went into the audition and I, I wore all black, because black is my color. And, um, and I had this, like, um, not a cape, but like a throw, like a like a large scarf, I don't, I don't know, a friend of mine made it and it's kind of hippie and trippy and weird. Um, I was like, it's perfect for her, it's very dramatic. So I walked in with that, threw it over my black costume and I read two scenes once. I read the scene with, um, and this is the pilot, so it was the scene with Emma uh, at the very end when she comes and when she's bringing Henry back. Um, outside of Regina's home on the porch there, that scene and the wedding scene. I read each scene once. Eddie and Adam looked at me like this. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And I said, do you want to see anything else? Like, you want to play a little bit? And Oh no, that was great. It's perfect, thanks. <laughs> okay, walked out, left. Found out shortly later that I got the part. They said, you terrified us. <laughs> you terrified us. I was like, yes. So, so you have to thank your friend for knitting that big, yeah, like, totally. that, you know, that cashmina helped. type thing. <laughs> and growing up in Brooklyn, I'm sure helps. That, well, yeah. That's amazing. Um, how do you, well, let's talk first a little bit about your relationship with Emma on screen. Sort yes. of over the five seasons, yeah. The savior turned dark one, Emma, and the, you know, former evil queen. You have this fantastically dynamic relationship. Let's, we do. you know, let's just go through that. We do. We have, our character's relationship has evolved to such an incredible place. Um, these are two women that hated each other early on, like really hated each other. And, and for good reason. I mean, Regina tried to kill her multiple times. Um, Oops. And, and Emma was a real threat for Regina, and I think it really had to do with Henry, um, ultimately. And if it weren't for Henry, these two women weren't, wouldn't be where they are. I think the fear in losing her son is really what forced Regina to kind of figure out a new approach and a new way to deal with Emma. And in doing so, and all the adventures that we've been forced 
to, to go on together has also helped the relationship quite a bit. And um, through our adventures and through, you know, Emma discovering that she has this power and Regina helping her, they've become great friends and family.